NASA is going to try making fake clouds again. After having to postpone a rocket launch five times due to weather and other issues, NASA is hoping that the sixth time is the charm. NASA is scheduled to launch a rocket from the Wallops Flight Facility. The mission is to deploy 10 canisters from the agency's new multi-canister ampule ejection system. The soda can-sized canisters will release vapor tracers to form artificial red and blue-green clouds that scientists will then use to study the Earth's ionosphere. The colorful clouds can be seen along the East Coast, from New York to North Carolina, and westward to Charlottesville, Virginia. The visitor center at Wallops will be open about an hour before the launch for anyone who wants to personally see the rocket blast off. NASA won't call off the launch until the very last minute if conditions still aren't right. Godspeed! Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Three, two, one. Blast off. Israel deploys Star Wars missile killer system. Israel has upgraded its missile defense system so that the country can be protected from the ground to outer space. The bottom tier of Israel's missile defense system is the Iron Dome Interceptor, which is designed to destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells fired up to 70 kilometers away. The second tier of the system is David's Sling, which is designed to shoot down mid-range lower altitude missiles. The Arrow 2 is designed to intercept missiles in low to high atmosphere. The latest addition, the Arrow 3, has a range of up to 2,400 kilometers and can be used as an anti-satellite weapon. With the Arrow 3 missile system, Israel and the United States may be the only countries that have the capability of shooting down targets in space. New Zealand joins the space race. Test launches for a commercial space rocket built by a startup based both in Los Angeles and New Zealand are scheduled to take place this week. The Rocket Lab Electron is made of carbon composite material and its rocket boosters use 3D printed Rutherford engines. The rocket's first stage has a cluster of nine electric engines that burn liquid oxygen and refined kerosene. The second stage has a single vacuum optimized engine that can carry payloads weighing up to 225 kilograms. The Electron rocket will deliver small satellites into space. They will be used for mapping, to predict the weather, provide high-speed internet, and analyze the environment. Rocket Lab plans to complete three test launches before the Electron is available commercially. The company plans to eventually build and launch one rocket per week, with flights costing around 5 million US dollars each. World's largest aircraft, the Strato Launch, nears completion. Seattle-based company Vulcan Aerospace announced that its Strato Launch Systems, an air launch platform for rockets, is close to completion. The Strato Launch has a wingspan of 385 feet and measures 238 feet in length. The six-engine aircraft is currently the world's largest. The Strato Launch is designed to carry rockets weighing up to 275 tons. It would take off from a runway with the rocket attached to its belly and release the rocket when it reaches 35,000 feet. The rocket then fires its own engine and travels towards its orbit. Strato Launch is designed to make air rocket launches into low Earth orbit a routine commute. The Strato Launch systems are expected to be completed by the end of this year and is estimated to start commercial services before 2020. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. North Korea successfully launches missile into space. North Korea launched a long-range rocket on Sunday morning carrying what Pyongyang says is a satellite. Its launch caused North Korea's neighbors and the United States to release a flurry of condemnations. Many see it as a disguised ballistic missile test. The rocket was launched near the North Korean and Chinese border at around 9.30 a.m. South Korean time. As planned, the rocket traveled southwards over the Yellow Sea. South Korean officials say they lost track of the missile over Jeju Island at approximately 9.36 a.m. Japanese officials, however, say they spotted the missile over the southern islands of Okinawa at 9.41 a.m. The missile's final stage, which was carrying a satellite, then entered space. According to Reuters, the newly launched satellite is expected to orbit Earth every 94 minutes. 
The launch has prompted South Korea to announce that it will begin talks with the U.S. about deploying advanced missile defense. Of course, China and Russia are opposed to that idea. Spaceflight company successfully launches and lands reusable rocket. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin space travel company conducted a historic test on Monday, successfully launching and landing a reusable rocket. The New Shepard space vehicle is made of a crew capsule and a rocket booster powered by a single BE-3 liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engine. The rocket's BE-3 engine delivered 110,000 pounds of thrust for its launch from Van Horn in Texas. Once in space, the crew capsule separated from the booster, floating for several minutes before deploying parachutes and re-entering the atmosphere. The booster also descended under guided flight. Before landing, it reignited the BE-3 engine, which allowed a vertical landing at 7 kilometers an hour, just 1.3 meters from the center of its launch pad. While the SpaceX reusable rocket was able to fly a few hundred meters into space in 2013, the Blue Origin rocket could fly up to 100 kilometers above Earth. This means that the rocket and its capsule could be reused and eventually employed to allow paying passengers to take trips into space for a few minutes at a time. The rockets, however, are not yet powerful enough to bring a spacecraft into orbit. For that purpose, SpaceX is designing a larger and more powerful reusable rocket that could be launched after December 2015.